the square root of 20 is really what? Well, to simplify the square roots, what you want to do, there's two different techniques. One technique is you can divide out perfect squares. And what are perfect squares? These are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. Any number times itself. And so in this case, you can see square root of 20 is actually like 4 times 5. What's the square root of 4? Well, it's just 2, right? And so we're left with 2 square root of 5. Now that's one method. The other method that students like to do, and uh, teachers like to show their students, is do a prime factorization tree. So what you would do is you would break down the number into its prime factors, but when you're taking the square root, what you're doing is you're looking for two of the same number. It doesn't have to be the number two, it just has to be a pair of the same number. So for each pair, for each uh, group of two numbers, you get one of that quantity. So this would be two, and then you're left with five left over, because we only have one five here. Now if you want to check your work, you take the number on the outside, two, you square it, that's four, and you multiply it by the number on the inside, and that gives you um, 20, which is the original square root, and you got it. So let's go ahead and do another example. But before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to um, Brian McLogan. He's the one that put me in touch with this uh, Notability app, uh, so that we can do a little different uh, type of uh, tutorial here to help you in your math class and help you understand these concepts better. So uh, I wanted to appreciate uh, Brian for sharing that. And uh, go ahead and check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. So uh, he's got a nice format where he works with the students in his classroom. He videotapes it and puts his uh, lessons up on YouTube. So if you're looking for additional help, go ahead and check out uh, Brian's channel. And uh, let's go on to number 14 now. So square root of 108. Okay, so 108, what we can do is we can break that down into its prime factors. So the way we do that is we say, okay, this is an even number, because it ends in an even number, and you can see that that's gonna be two times 54, right? 54 is even, we can divide that by two, so that's two times 27, and 27, that's three times nine, and then nine, you can see, is three times three, right? But remember, we're looking for groups of two of the same number. So here's a group of two, here's a group of two, and we've got a three left over, so we've got for each group of two, we get one of those, so that's going to be two times three, okay, which is six, and then you can see how we have this three over here left over. We want to put that underneath the square root. Okay, now what would happen if there was a three left over and like a five left over? Well, then you would multiply those together, and that would be 15 underneath the square root, okay? So that's uh, just the prime factorization method. Let's go down to another example. How about, for example, like number six? Let's see if we can do that one. Okay, so we've got the square root of 98 over here. Okay, so 98, you might recognize that 98 is the square root of 49 times the square root of 2, because 49 times 2 is 98. 49 is a perfect square, so we could write that as 7 root 2. So that was kind of an easy one, but when the numbers get a little bit larger, like let's say, for example, number 17, the square root of 392, right? Well, 392, Let's do the prime factorization method for this one. So 392, we know it's even, we can divide it by two, so that's gonna be 196 uh, times two. If, if you, that's, you can't do that in your head, just use a calculator. This is gonna be two times 98. This is gonna be two times 49, and 49 is seven times seven. Okay, so we're looking for groups of two. We've got a group of sevens, a group of twos, and we've got a two left over, right? So this is gonna be seven times two, which is 14. And then this two that's left over, that's gonna stay underneath the square root sign, and we've got it, 14 square root of two. Okay, so you're with me so far? Let's go ahead and cruise on down to some cube root examples. How about number 20? So we're taking the cube root of 56, and by the way, you know it's a cube root because you see that little three right there? That's called the index. And that tells you, you know, you're looking for uh, perfect cubes, okay, to, to uh, factor out. So what are perfect cubes? Those are numbers like eight, because that's two cubed. Okay, here, let's write that down, two cubed. And let's see, what else do we have? We've got um, 27, that's three cubed. We've got 64, that's four cubed, and so on. So you can memorize these, and that's definitely helpful. Or you can do the prime factorization method, which I'll show you in a moment. But first of all, let's go ahead and break this down. So we can see this is eight times seven, right? And the reason I picked eight again is because that's a perfect uh, cube, and the cube root of eight is two, and so you can see we're left with two and seven left over, so two cube root of seven. Now again, if you don't like that method, which a lot of students really really don't care for this method, this can be a quicker way of doing it, but if you're not uh, super keen on that, just go ahead and break down the number into its prime factors, okay, like I'm doing right here now. And remember, when you're taking the cube root, you're looking for groups of three of the same number, right? 
So let's see, we've got a group of three twos here. So that represents a perfect cube. So that's just going to be two. We just get one of that group. And then we've got a seven left over. Now, if 